Now let's look into the one of the most important uh, concept and the statistical testing is uh, multiple testing. So as we have mentioned previously, there is a saying in statistics, torture the data long enough and it will confess. <laughs> I'm repeating that. Torture the data long enough and it will confess. So this means that if you look at the data through enough different perspectives and ask enough questions, you almost invariably will find a statistical significant effect. So for example, if you have 20 predictor variables, how many? 20, 20 predictor variables and one outcome variable. Okay, one, one outcome variable and 20 predictor variables and all randomly generated, the odds are pretty good that at least one predictor will turn out to be statistically significant if you do a series of 20 significance uh, tests at the alpha is equals to 0 0.05 level. As previously discussed, uh, this is called a type 1 error if it is or uh, false positive. You can calculate this probability by first finding the probability that all will correctly test non-significant uh, non at, at the 0 0.05 level. So the probability that one will correctly test non-significant is 0 0.95. So the probability that all 20 will correctly test non-significant is 0 0.95 times 0 0.95 times 0 0.95 times and so on of all 20 predictor variables. So total it would come around 0 0.36. So the probability that at least one predictor will falsely test significant is the flip side of the probability or one minus of probability that all will be non-significant. That is equals to 0 0.64. This is known as the alpha inflation. This is known as the alpha inflation. We will discuss that again, but I just want to give you a gist of it. That's the reason. Okay, so multiple testing refers to the practice of conducting multiple, statistic, uh, multiple statistical tests simultaneously or sequentially leading to an increased risk of false positive or false positives or type 1 errors. So, in other words, the more tests that are conducted, the greater the likelihood that at least one of them will produce a significant result due to chance or chance alone, and and that's what we don't want. But that's that. But that we don't want. So that's what uh, now multiple testing refers to the practice of conducting multiple statistical tests either simultaneously or sequentially uh, leading to an increased risk of false positives or type 1 errors in other words the more tests that are conducted the greater the likelihood that at least one of them will fall one of them will produce a significant results due to chance alone so so from this, uh, we will have the adjusted p-values accounting for doing multiple tests on the same data. So after doing the multiple tests on the same data, you will get an adjustment of p-value. So adjustment of p-values. Then overfitting, because of this, you will have the overfitting, even they fit the noise also. And... Uh, We'll also have alpha inflation just now we have discussed. If you want to understand better, I can uh, explain it one more time. But the alpha inflation is the multiple testing phenomena. This is multiple testing phenomena in which alpha, the probability of making a type 1 error increases as you conduct more tests. That's what the example I have given you before. Okay. Okay. So I will explain uh, or else I don't think you will understand.
so multiple testing in that uh, alpha in that will alpha inflation okay alpha inflation so alpha inflation let's take we have a uh, 20 predictor variables so predictor variables are 20 and the outcome variable is 1 is equals to 1 done all randomly generated and the odds are pretty good that at least one predictor will uh, falsely turn out to be statistically significant if you do a series of 20 significant tests at the alpha is equals to 0 0.05 so as we have 20 predictor variable so we need to do uh, uh, a sig significant uh, significance test with the each variable correct correct or not that's why we are calling it as a multiple testing because you have to do uh, testing with the each predictor variable so here what we are saying is when we do when we do a 20 series of 20 significance tests at the alpha is equals to 0 0.05 level there are good amount of uh, the pretty there are the odds are pretty good the odds are pretty good that at least one predictor at least one predictor at least one predictor will turn out to be statistically will will give will give a type 1 error type 1 error which is nothing but false positive okay okay it will reject it though it's it it will reject the null hypothesis but uh, in in real case null hypothesis is uh, true that's what at least one variable so now with uh, we can calculate this probability by first finding the probability that uh, all will correctly test non significant at the 0 0.05 level so the probability that one will correctly test non significant is so one that uh, probability would be 0 0.95 times 95 times 95 simply power of 20 that's is equals to we got uh, 0 0.36 so now what we want what we want is the probability that at least one predictor the probability that at least one predictor one predictor will falsely test significant is the flip side of this probability so that is equals to 1 minus of probability probability that all will be non sig sorry non significant so how much is that is equals to 1 minus 0 0.36 so that's is equals to 0 0.64 so that's what we got and this value is known as alpha inflation that's it okay this value is known as alpha inflation i hope you got my point at least now so and uh, 
these are the main important terminology of multiple testing because if you have multiple features obviously you have to check the significance of each feature with the outcome variable that's how a data science project works as yes no tell now nah, yes okay so that's how it works so and these are adjustment p values we'll get it and war fitting and then alpha inflation so the problem this problem is particularly relevant uh, multiple uh, uh, this problem is particularly relevant uh, in the context of hypothesis testing where the goal is to determine whether a particular relationship or effect exists uh, between two or more variables so multiple uh, testing can lead to an increased risk of false uh, false positives where significant uh, results where significant result is found even though there is no true effect so to address uh, this issue several methods have been uh, developed uh, to control the false positive rate in multiple testing so that includes the first one is born ferroni cor uh, correction so born ferroni correction so this involves uh, adjusting the significance level for each individual test by dividing it by the number of tests being conducted for example if you are conducting 10 tests and want to maintain the overall alpha of 0.05 you would use an alpha of 0.05 for each individual tests let's do the let's take this method so Uh, multiple testing methods to control the false positive rate in the multiple testing of course multiple testing is what we'll be doing in data science projects so to control to control the uh, false positive rate from the multiple testing we are using using lot of methods out of that uh, one is born ferroni correction so here uh, it's just adjust the significance level for each individual test adjust the alpha for each individual test by dividing it by the number of uh, tests uh, being conducted okay so this is what uh, is born ferroni method and uh, in our example so how many features we have total predictor variables are 20 so tests uh, we will be conducting is 20 and uh, and what's the alpha level alpha is equals to 0.05 overall we want to take now the adjusted alpha no overall alpha is 0.05 now we want to use an adjusted alpha corrected alpha corrected alpha is equal to tests divided by alpha and then print corrected alpha is equals to corrected okay so this is what the oh sorry sorry my mistake alpha divided by tests and this is what the alpha corrected alpha we are going to use now just to avoid alpha inflation we can use born ferroni correction method and we'll get the correction alpha and this correction alpha can be used in statistical significance test with each feature with each feature next let's look into the second method so the second method is false discovery rate control false discovery rate control so this involves 
controlling the proportion of false positives among all significant results. So this approach is less conservative than the Bonferroni correction and may be more appropriate in situations where there are a large number of tests being conducted. So here what happens is uh, uh, this uh, false discovery rate FDR control. False discovery rate control uh, this involves controlling the proportion of false positives uh, among all significant results. Uh, so this approach is less conservative than the Bonferroni correction and may be more appropriate in situations when there are a large number of tests being conducted. And the third method that we have here is family-wise error rate control. So family-wise error rate control. So this involves controlling the probability of making at least one type 1 error across all tests being conducted. So this approach is uh, more conservative than FDR control and may be appropriate in situations where the number of tests is relatively small. So overall, it's important to consider the issue of multiple testing when conducting statistical analysis and to use appropriate methods to control the fa false positive rate. So controlling the false positive rate is very important. By controlling the false positive rate, you can avoid alpha inflation. To avoid alpha inflation, you need to follow one of these methods, Bonferroni correction or false discovery rate or family-wise error rate. Depends upon the sampling, depends upon the, uh, depends upon the situation. If, uh, if you have, uh, 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 like huge amount of features then you can go for the FDR false discovery rate if you have small that's the family wise error rate uh, control